All right, let's do this. Welcome back, ladies and gents, to the Daily Trading Recap, brought to you today by Amazon. Not the actual online shopping center, it's the river itself. Go to Amazon in Brazil and mention Daily Trading Recap for 20% off of people looking at you like you are crazy. Uh, really nothing for me today, $7 down day. Had some good uh, intentions going with these long setups. Had one short opportunity that, um, of course, in hindsight, could have been played a little bit better, but I think I played it to a T of what uh, I came into the trade with uh, and the information that I had around it. So SPY, really nothing once again today. Little bit of thing I want to mention first with all this housekeeping before we get into the trades on SPY 2. Of course, it looks like this massive, huge sell-off panic right in the open. But again, as we continue to look at SPY, we have to realize the time frame that it's trading on and realize that this was like a dollar and 20 cents, that quick sell-off in the morning, and it really is so minimal compared to anything else. Just wanted to get that out of the way quick and mention it. Reaffirm that to myself once again. Market internals on the day, NASDAQ, 188 billion total dollar volume. That's a little bit low. Nicely, same thing, a little bit on the low side, 206 billion total dollar volume. OTC is kind of hovering around the same, 2.4 billion total dollar volume. So to the trades, Dare was my first short setup. This one I had sharded from the 30th of June as another morning dump kind of setup. Not an A+, plus, not an awesome trade. So this is the 30th of June when it had positive phase B1 trial news, whatever. This is a American biotech, nice flow to 47 million. On this day, on the 30th of June, it had a like 1% or 2% reported short interest, whereas today, same float, but 11% reported short interest. Who knows if it's accurate? Who knows if that's really up to date? But interesting to see that it's like 10% higher almost on the short side. So this was the trade that I was looking at similar to trying to nail today and looking at, okay, we're not hugely panicking off the table right away in the pre-market, but there is a little bit of opportunity here in the morning. Maybe since there is a little bit of more short percentage on that float, could see close to 10% right away in the morning, in the first half hour of market. That was everything I was trading for. Also looking into say, okay, I want to start a position with this initial VWAP crack and make like sizing in, allowing myself to scale in more rather than trying to go all in brute force with one entry on this one. So this was his 30th. That was the mindset carrying into today. And the same thing of looking at the daily, this is just a beaten company, this volume day. This was the 30th day right here. You can see that volume candle was pretty nice but not compared to what it did on this crazy day anyway. And I also mentioned, I brought it up on the 2nd of July, a few days after that button. To also say too that even though this wasn't the greatest chart as a morning dump setup, and also the fact too that there was just not a lot of short setups anywhere on my scanner, especially since I lowered my scanner requirements today too. I was feeling some other people were um, looking around the horn i think some other people were nailing some of the same setups that i like to trade but just on normally ones that i would have balked at because they were just so low volume or so much of a lower percentage rise or news spike peak um, so now i'm kind of opening myself up to say hey i've i've seen that those ones still work and give the 10 percent opportunity so i'm open that scanner up to or open myself up as well too, to be able to trade those ones but even at that point today in the pre-market Nothing was really popping up. Dare was the only one that caught my attention that much. So, and the, yeah, bringing up this up to two days after this day just to prove that the overall trend for this stock is down. And even though it does spike, it can be manipulated to some extent. It is a terrible company. So starter position here today. A little bit greedy here, trying to get a 1.9 fill for my first entry. I think this was 100 shares a piece for each of these pink arrows here to the short side. As it finally broke VWAP, I got another entry of 100 shares, 185 I think I filled. And then as it was pushing down more, tried for another 100. Then we reclaimed VWAP a little bit more. After that, pushed back under. If it was testing here, yeah, I was definitely getting out of this high day risk level of 1.9, especially 2 being that whole round number, a key number there as a risk level. And being able to size in small helped me 
stay focused emotionally and stability of the trade itself, let it to breathe and allow it to come back and test a little bit, but then ultimately fall back under. So then tried view app once again, couldn't break one eight though. I mentioned that it did snap on, it snapped the bid a little bit to like one seven nine here, but ultimately came back up, failed to break one eight again. So at this point I'm carrying over the mentality from a few weeks back of being in these types of trades where it's just failing to crack this type of resistance in the pre-market. So at this point, I'm thinking, I do not want to be in a squeezer in the morning and that if it's not broken down in the pre-market, then my whole trade idea is over and it's time to adjust the trade itself. So at this point, I'm willing to just take off the majority of the position, not necessarily all of the position in profit, but to say, this is no longer the setup that I'm looking for from that initial point of entry because I'm looking for basing it still off of that June 30th trade idea, but also saying I'm looking for a hard so <laughs> I'm looking for this exactly what it did today. That's what it boils down to. And that's yes, I mishandled it looking back here and seeing, oh, wow, it went perfectly to my one seven target when it was trading around this region. I had an order in at this point, say cover those 300 shares at one seven and then it's doing this little blah 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 blah, blah and then i forced to cover as it's coming back up above this like one eight area once again so i'm saying yeah, i think i could go a little bit higher after that but <sighs> that's straight that's part of it and that's how they freaking get you when you think you're on top of it and managing your risk well and being smart and trying to outsmart the people who are trying to outsmart you it's just such a cat and mouse ridiculous game to play so this is like a three dollar win after a seven dollar borrowing fee cost whatever so the, the trade was there that's what i identified and especially it being the only short opportunity today to glad i could at least dip my toe in the water on these i haven't felt i've been i had none of them last week at all whatsoever pretty crazy hood dare hood um okay so yeah holding up extremely well from the weekend of course again not a lot of data since recent recent ipo had a little bit of a sell-off here maintaining under view app on this previous friday but gapping up in this pre-market holding strength and volume well above vwap a little bit of a pullback here and then try again for a high day, but then fail to do it again. Spike into the market open and I knew with every ounce in fiber in my body that this thing is going to dump hard at the open. It didn't dump extremely hard, but I knew it was just going to be some slappage of the bids and all the week longs that were trying to get in on this move today. Immediately kind of felt it was just choppy as well too. Not like pure awesome red candles here, but reclaimed back above VWAP in this still just hay fire of whatever it was trying to do in the morning failed to break 60 and that was kind of the final nail in the coffin for the day it, yeah retried a little bit but then pfft, sayonara in this morning session so you can see this big red candle too was just massive blow to all the psyches of those longs unfortunate to see but i don't think this thing is dead and 1.5 billion dollar volume again today on this one it's still at an average of like 100 just a little over 100 shares per trade which is like just over six grand per trade so it's not i don't think i took the exact data from yesterday but i think that's hovering around the same time or from friday but i think it's hovering around still the same kind of average shares per trade average dollar size per trade as it has been so again i don't think this thing is dead it certainly didn't die off or look bearish today i think it could continue to do some crazy things the rest of this week three other longs that i kind of categorized in the same light and i traded all three of these i believe i did differing sizes but all kind of around like 100 to 200 dollars each trade so works i was watching to the long side this one I didn't mention last week, but this was an awesome kind of third day play, a Dan Irish type of setup on this day. Whereas you're looking for the big move. Eh. 
you get a pretty nice move to the upside here and then the day following that one is just a consolidation or really nothing to stay and then big move to the upside um, potentially even breaking that high of day on that big day from that day which was this day so i recognized that one and totally saw the opportunity for this big move and run up here that those types of trades can be and that's kind of something i want to start looking at too i think it those types of patterns are working out well but this one was still on my watch list as it was holding well in this after hours here and holding decently in this pre-market so it could have potentially tried this high a day area once again on daily and then it just started spiking out of nowhere in this pre-market no news catalyst to come out uh, fundamentals on this one 7.4 million float reported short interest of 58 percent i see here on my scans i did not see that earlier but that's insane it's an american software solutions for management of healthcare providers blah 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 whatever but i guess it's also a wall street bets push so yeah, certainly testing these looking on the daily before today i was really okay canceling out this day as we were coming in on that yesterday friday trading day look at the volume candle today too that's absolutely awesome I kind of dis disavowed this day here on this 12th and looked at, okay, we're testing some, this technical level here of like three, four is a pretty key area in my opinion of what we could do if we break above that. And then it was just like throwing me off balance that, oh my gosh, wow, we're just spiking crazy out of nowhere in this pre-market and it was holding well and okay, it's looking a little red. It could come down here. Nope, we're spiking still. Are we going to break under VWAP before market open? Nope, we're still going to go. And then it was just a total fake out right away in the morning. Just bloop, bloop, reversed right against you. Crazy fast, crazy quick dip and rip, if you want to even call it that. But just choppy and really in the morning, failure to go berserk. Uh, or just to continue the rest of the day. This totally was an awesome dip and rip here. If you're taking it at any of these levels identifying okay this is higher lows not that one this one we're putting in higher lows an entry point around here around vweb is it's still just so kind of choppy and deciding what it wanted to do it could have dumped here but that's a still a very nice risk reward opportunity to the upside of what this was you're looking from four three you could have played your 10 percent move here because that's really everything i'm looking for is are there tradable blocks of 10 percentage points anywhere on these charts and how can we be able to define those earlier and how can we be able to manage our risk better so that it's just so much more emotionally easier how can we be in it when, right away when it's going to happen and that's what i really want at the end of the day is i don't want to fool around and have to take such crazy ride risk levels hoping that these eventually turn out i just want to be in, be in them immediately and they work out in my favor right away but this one again too i didn't trade it crazily i think i was in show my trades come on i'm um, trying it for around i believe this point here to yeah so i was trying on this move thinking oh this could be the move that holds up a vwap and we get some more high a day pushes here but then it ended up dumping so i was just cutting it around this point waiting for more of this action here and of course again like 15 minutes later it does the same thing so that trade wasn't huge i was like 10 shares so that was really nothing but good to see that it, it was doing what i wanted and wouldn't hope to to do so that was kind of it for the morning session it just continued to dump fade back off down to vwap but was holding well see the basing here around just above four dollar area bryce too it's funny he even mentioned in his small cap recap too he started this video his video right around this point saying oh hey look at the great technical levels we're holding here you know it's a nice little range especially coming from market open you could see it's kind of defining here and he goes yeah in my in my opinion i probably would get a trade around here risking that v if it reclaimed vwap you know risking these kind of lows this little trend line here and of course beautiful beyond 10 percent opportunity there to the upside totally awesome vwap hold type of trade that again not very prevalent in this type of market or to say that I've seen it a lot to make me pull the trigger on it. I was totally aware of it. And I think as I pulled up the chart again around this point, as it was, I saw this like green candle spiking above view app thinking, man, this could definitely do it today. I could see this just 
if I get a position at 4-3, I could see it going to 4-7 at least at some point the rest of the day. And that type of mentality wasn't even thinking, oh, I need it to happen right away and do this move exactly. But sure enough, 100%, it did it. And then, geez, big old drop off here on this candle. It said night-night and just fell off the table. Still sinking into the after hours here. Just so choppy and nobody's winning awesomely unless you have the supply right and you know what's going to happen just tough situations out there and that's what um you know sykes is saying too even in the chat the, you know there's not a lot of red names in the chat anyway and especially in the afternoon i don't think i saw any red names posting anything for afternoon training hours everybody's just taking time off super s smalling <laughs> Super downsizing their position sizes. Um, number seven, especially, is doing that a lot with his shorts, I think, as well. And that maybe I need to take a lesson from them as well, too, which I kind of did. I'm not throwing huge position sizes around here. Still just learning and kind of experimenting with everything on this, too. But that was works on that one. Uh, and so these three, I kind of clumped into the same type of mentality that I was looking for this, you know, dip and rip pattern. Any was the same thing. Big Friday yesterday, big volume day. Like the most tradable patterns, you could play this to the short side if you wanted to, but then just choppy the rest of the day. Big squeeze in the pre-market here. Chopping around, chopping around, putting in new highs, coming back down, holding VWAP, dumping VWAP. Again, just choppiness right out of the gate. Dumping, reclaiming, dumping. And what I was looking for... I think I actually got it earlier. I wish it would pull up my freaking trades. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't. But getting into, I was looking again for this type of move or anything like this. I think I was out at this point before this happened because I saw it later. And then it was just like, yeah, whatever. That wasn't that awesome of a percentage move anyway. So it was just like, yeah, I was just getting frustrated. I was either too early or I was just cutting it too soon or just so choppy and inconsiderate. And yeah, it's whatever. So this one, again, has a little bit of a crypto sector in it as well. Of course, as Bitcoin is breaking 46K as of right now, this one's a Canadian company, float of 5.8 million. So we love those low floats with a, especially with a 12.8% reported short interest. The 10% blocks are there but they're also like you know it's just i want to say it's hard because nothing's hard especially when everybody else is making money when everybody else is making money too <sighs> but it's just so much focus and you've got to be so 100 percent ready and willing to take on the choppiness take on the risk be able to smash your head against the wall trying to watch these plays in the level two that's just summer trading so then along with these tickers as well too, FTFT, also another crypto ticker, kind of spiking a little bit over the weekend with the Bitcoin news. Playing this one, the same thing. This one I was assuming and carrying over with the kind of third day trading mentality. I was waiting for this one to kind of be either a short even, trying to trick a short after any of these points or even in the pre-market of saying, Hey, I don't think it's going to die off, but I think it could get a little bit of a good sell off here, maybe back down to three, two or three, one. So that thought went through my head, but then also the thought too of, okay, it's holding decently. Well, it's not dying off. I think it could, it could get a little squeezy here. So it did produce a little bit of a spike with some volume, <coughs> with some volume, but just still failed to continue on. So this one was a little bit separate from the other two, but still kind of same, same, but not the same that of what I was trying to do. I think I took like $150 position size on this one and ended up cutting it. I think I was trying, I think I actually got one fill here with this candle as it immediately got brought back down again. Maybe tried a little bit more around these points and I was just chopping myself around stupidly. Just frustrating to see that sometimes they did end up going pretty nicely to the upside just a few minutes after my entry. But that's learning and that's experimenting with these types of tickers. ZY was another one. This was one of my main focuses out of the morning. 
trades today, especially. I think I was pretty much all the way out of dare. I just had like 100 shares left. And I was looking at this one as the, hey, this is the third day play that you should focus a lot of your energy on. And looking back to, in hindsight, this isn't like, this gap down should totally nullify that theory <laughs> because this is not, this carries really not the same amount of weight as those types of plays do. Yes, it did have a big, pretty awesome day. This was last Thursday. It spiked right away out of the gate, held super well, continued to squeeze in the after hours on that day. Had this just like consolidation, a little bit of sell off, really nothing this day on that Friday. And then was looking for fireworks out of the gate today. Not really like huge fireworks going back to 16.5. Just looking for a move from like 12.5 to 13.5, you know, maybe a little bit beyond that, maybe touching 14. That's the trade I was looking for, but just got totally smoked right out of the gate. I was kind of flabbergasted at this point, just how quickly it was hitting my risk levels. And initially I, I started off sizing in, which is like 10 share lots a piece right in the morning, right in the first minute, uh, got like one, got like 10 shares right here. And then it was, I looked away for one second, turned back around and it was already down to 12, two. It was like, just like, Whoa, with my risk level, kind of arbitrarily set around this like 1216 area of this little point here. I didn't really want to risk want to risk 117 with how far it was, but then for how quickly it was dumping there, I was like, "Oh, okay, maybe maybe I should risk widen up my risk a little bit if it's going to this is going to turn like an, into a little bit of a dip buy opportunity almost." So then tried to size in a little bit more, but I was still pushing by the ask around these candles and the spread was so wide that I was just getting terrible fills. It was trading at like 11, like down by the 11 eights. And then I was getting like 12 fills or just under I just stupid fills. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. Once again, I should have just been putting in the limit order on the active trader window. So stupid. I hate that active trader window, but then just forced to, and then as it's coming up, I'm going, Oh my gosh, this is a dip by opportunity. It's going to come all the way back to green on the day and then it didn't so I just cut it around this little choppiness here and no strength no volume to come back in push it just continuing to fade and rightfully so this gap down should have turned me away from it all but it could have gone to 13.5 it could have should have would have done a lot of things but it didn't so I can't argue with the market or the price action so that was that one today and again I'm not not a crazy huge loss or even position size really on that one. Just looking to continue to experiment and play around with all these types of things. I think I think today, I'll get into these other tickers first before I wrap it up that way. NSAV wasn't even really paying attention to this one. This one I completely forgot about as a panic dip buy opportunity. You can see it was this nice run up and then just had these like four red days. It's just like, okay, whatever. And then today really 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 nice panic to the downside not the most beautiful opportunity to the upside i think this is just under like 20 percent if you were perfect but sykes got totally screwed over he got a big down day today on this one um, telling myself if i'm watching this go ahead and watch his video from today if you can find it from the 9th of august 2021 about nsav he was trying to buy it here and then he was trying to buy it like the sevens around this point too, it's just kind of stupid entries. And he even admits it himself and totally too, that he was just so anxious and excited to trade this, that he gets in so early. And these dip buys are probably the best example of the types of trades that you'd need to be so unclingy, so not needy for these types of dip buys. Because if you think you're getting in at an awesome price or ahead of everybody else, you're really like, the first one to get screwed over at some point. So really fell off again, broke that dip bottom low once again. So pretty different from the 2020 market of dip buys that we saw. Still, of course, we're in summer months, obviously, and it's 2021. Another dip buy here, but not panicky, not beautifully green opportunity. Yeah, this whatever. It's OTC dip buys and until they continue to start showing awesome opportunity. I don't think I really care about diverting my attention that much to them. Uh, other ones I was watching today, BYSI, 
This one again was the big mover past few days, big old gap up. Not the most clean or parabolic charts. It did have that parabolic the very first day for the run up. See this one going up like to 46 and then all the way back down to market open. And I just chopping around this day yesterday. I had some spiking in the morning or this day Friday and then view Apple kind of, yeah. And then today kind of expecting anything. If it's over 30, hundred percent, you better believe I'm getting in at least one share to think what it could do above that. Not a lot of volume today either as well too. I should pull that up what it was today. Clicky, clicky. Uh, $282 million volume, uh, 71,000 trades. Not that incredible or awesome, but it is certainly not dead. And I could still see this thing having some strength at some point, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, if it does similar days like this, retesting that $30 level because it's been twice now that it perfectly rejected at $30. So if that point breaks, you better believe that that's going to cause some infliction on this trade for the next few days then some other charts that were on my watch list or on the morning scanner that they spiked and they failed and i kind of watched them as hey maybe i just should just get short these ones because they're dying off anyway and i feel like that's been kind of a trend as well too that they'll do these quick spikes and then die off lmnl was one that i thought about it but wasn't willing to do it because of what it was doing here and the lack of volume, it really had to continue on. Just didn't want to be a part of it. And good for me that it wasn't. It went to the upside, not like insane. Pretty nice percentage moves, not insane to the upside, but glad I wasn't touching this thing. But on the flip side of that, excuse me, WINT. Getting in around a VWAP crack here. Of course, beautiful pre-market beyond 10% opportunity there and even getting short right at market open. Still beautiful beyond 10% opportunity that you could have had. And that day, totally under VWAP the whole day. Just a dying little ticker. So that was really it. Um, I forgot what I was going to say before I cut myself off too. Again, yeah, a lot of other, the big names just slowing their position sizes, slowing their tempo down, their whole mentality. I really feel like I am doing that. I'm still growing in the mentality of who I want to be as a trader and who I just want to be as a person in general and how I look at and view the charts and even just doing these videos and being able to see myself and talk about these charts once again, bring them up. It reinforces the idea that you just got to be so committed and so with it. I mean, that was the best way to put it. There really is no room for just slacking off and just pretending to think that you are doing the hard work and getting in all these tickers. Well, it's really not true. Um, and I've kind of played a game with myself that way a little bit. And I don't know, it's a growing process and I'm going off the rails a little bit, but that's pretty much all it was today. Nothing really awesome that caught my eye that I felt I should have been a part of other than maybe works on that VWAP hold trade. That was a pretty nice one. But it's a growing process, like I said again. I thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you guys tomorrow.